Hey guys, so it's time for another video. This time we're going to look at a deep dive into the core features and systems that will feature in the brand new expansion just announced yesterday on April the 19th the World of Warcraft Dragonflight. Now, once again, I'm still on vacation. I hope the sound quality is going to be good. I'm going to be looking down quite a lot because I'm going to be looking at these images and videos on my laptop. The whole purpose of this video is going to give you a deep dive into each of the core systems as said, and I'm going to try and grab as much information that I've heard from devs through articles, different websites, uh, sorting all this material out and give it to you as comprehensively and my own thoughts as much as possible. So join me for this video where I break down everything and hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about the next expansion to World of Warcraft. going to be five brand new zones which are going to be re released in this expansion the first one which is not listed here from what i can see is going to be where the drakthir class starts off and that's going to be the forbidden reach so there's going to be one leveling zone dedicated to the starting experience for the drakthir so we if you do not have a drakthir you won't be able to witness this location. However, I'm sure everyone's going to have a quick look at the Drakthir and see if it's going to be for you or not. After all, it's a brand new class, so why not try it? Now, on top of this, we're going to have four different uh, leveling zones. The main feature, well, one of the main features is we're going to be expanding from level 60 to level 70, just like in the days of the Burning Crusade, where we, where we advanced from classic vanilla up to uh, the, the Burning Crusade. And players would have been doing this most recently if they have been playing uh, classic The Burning Crusade as well. Now, spanning over these four zones, there's going to be, without a doubt, meeting many familiar faces such as Alexstrasza, Kalegos, Rathian, and lots of different denizens throughout the world. Now, the first zone that we will be looking at from what we can, from what we know so far, is going to be the Waking Shores. Now, the Waking Shores, from what we can see here um, from the developer, I'm just going to be clicking through this video here as best as I can uh, through the developer uh, interview just so we can see a couple of these, uh, you know, these, this animated, um, now the, the unfortunate thing is that they don't give that much coverage to the zones, which I kind of hope they'd flesh out a little bit more, have a little bit more video on these zones, but they don't seem to have that much footage, which is a little bit, uh, surprising now some of this artwork is absolutely incredible uh, the develop the art team has always done a fantastic job uh, with this so the waking shore effectively is going to be getting us as it states um it's going to be getting us through the starting experience for people who are not drakthir and that's going to be a wild untamed land which features the red dragon flight and the ancestral home of the black Dragonflight. So we're going to be fighting uh, lava, uh, lava mammoths and these half giants. Um, so we're going to be teaming up with a bit of Rathi in here. Now the next planes are going to be big, wide open planes. I remember this from the developer interview um, that they are looking at increasing the draw distance, and this is going to be the in, on, in the Onaran planes. So they're increasing how far we can see. Um, how how far we can see on our computers. So I'm sure it's going to be a, a huge sight to be able to be able to behold um, all this beauty, these vast majestic planes. Now, as we can see here, we can see some senators. We see some proto Drake uh, being attacked by them. Some more senators. So I guess the main feature of these lands are going to be the senators. Which were, t which were brought here uh, many, many ages ago. So it's going to be interesting in what we can see here. Um, but that's the first two zones. And it's going to primarily feature the, dream, the green dragonflight from what we can see. Now, moving on from there, we're going to be having a look at the next two zones. Uh, which will bring us up to the level 70 um, cap. With The first one is going to be the Azor Plain. 
as it states here, it's going to be one of the biggest zones to date. It's going to be heavily inspired by the Grizzly Hills in Northrend, which is going to be pretty cool. So I can't wait to, to see what they have in store here. I loved the ambience and the music to the Grizzly Hills back in the day of the of Northrend. And it just looking at the color palette here alone, this instantly gives me such Grizzly Hill vibes. So I'm, I'm without a doubt there's going to be with this uh, with this art here, there's going to be some snowy sections uh, delivered in here too, some vast wilderness uh, in the forests of this too. So it's going to be pretty cool um, just to, just to see this. Be ah, here we go. This is a fantastic shot. This looks absolutely gorgeous. Our team, as always, outdo themselves. I really hope now they're going to be able to, you know, deliver us some pretty cool uh, knolls, uh, different types of knolls that we have here. One of the enemies, uh, one of the enemies that we'll be uh, encountering, and Tuscar directly taken back once again from from the north from Northrend. We're going to be meeting more Tuscar. We're going to get uh, a bigger introduction to their race, possibly even a uh, reputation of some sort attached uh, with, with them as well. Uh, next, we're going to be moving on to the last new zone from what we know right now, at least the, the fourth leveling zone and the final zone. It's going to be the seat of power of all the dragon flights as it says here and that's Tal Drazus so it's going to be uh, full of vertical mountains I'm going to be uh, I'm going to pretty much be guessing that the brand new system of dragon riding which we'll be talking about in, in very very shortly uh, on the next section that's going to feature a lot here without a doubt and there's going to be probably lots of challenges uh, with that too the main hub si system here of the expansion the main hub si city is going to be here as well which is Val Draken so it looks pretty cool. This is going to be Val Draken, and it's going to be split up into different sections where the dragon flights have had their influence. So there's going to be a, like a red section, a blue section, etc. So it it. it it could be very promising with what the developers have in in uh, you know for us here. This art here from what we've seen from the cinematic yesterday. If you have not seen the cinematic reveal, then definitely go to my video, which will be linked at the end of this, uh, and check it out. So these are the four leveling zones, including the fifth zone, which is only for the Drakthir when they start off. So some little bits of uh, screenshots here and ducks, ducks are included as well. So just a couple of di different uh, shots here, which looks pretty, pretty cool. Now to help us get around these zones a lot faster, they're going to be introducing the brand new core feature to the world, which is dragon riding. Now, dragging riding seems to be, um, seems to definitely be a feature that someone on the WoW team has taken some inspiration from Guild Wars 2 because Guild Wars 2, it features heavily how much players love mounts and they've done a fantastic job in that game, if you've ever played it, uh, with how mounts work. Now, it makes sense with what the, with the type of expansion that we have here that you know, dragons that we can ride on a dragon. I'm getting classic vibes now of the animation, how, how to train a dragon. Um, th this is literally going to be me fulfilling this little dream now, being able to do this in, in WoW. Now, it's very important to note that this is called dragon riding and not dragon flying. And it's definitely going to be separ a separated feature. So they could possibly add this as... Uh, specific feature into older areas in WoW as well that could be very interesting to add where where it makes sense or maybe into future expansions they'll be able to add this feature as well but it's very important to note once again that this is dragon riding and not flying so what I'm assuming by this and they're carefully wording here is that flying will most likely be unlocked further into the expansion just like you do with all modern expansions to date right now possibly hidden behind some sort of achievements or anything like that so 
Dragon Riding will become accessible right away, nice and early in the expansion. However, you flying on your own mount will probably be a later addition and probably being able to permanently unlock this feature will probably be unlocked later in the expansion. Now from what we know as well is that these dragon riding um, systems will will level up so you'll be able to talent into these into these uh, dragons and you'll be able to customize them further probably things like more more time in the sky be, uh, faster gliding uh, better maneuvering you never know what type of special moves they're going to add but from what we can see here we're going to grow in skill and this will allow us to stay in the air longer so this is a whole new gameplay dynamic that this is going to add to the game and the more talented we are as riders the more we will be able to stay on the back of these creatures so these are more companions more so than our own mounts. Now in this we're going to get four different dragon types. The first one that we can see here now is the, is, um, is this the first one? This looks more, whoop, it's not seeming to load up the first one for some reason, but this one here that's on my screen right now, this is definitely a green uh, Rivron. Um, the website's loading a little bit slow, probably because I'm recording at the same time, so it is taking some time to load. This one here that we see is going to be a Proto Drake. Now, Proto Drakes, we, if you have been playing WoW for a long time, you definitely would have picked up a couple a couple of these especially during your north rent days so another variety that you'll be able to get will be these proto drakes another one on top of that is going to be um is going to be more of a kind of uh, of an ancient dragon type and that's going to be uh, like a petro dragon so we're definitely going to see what that turns out and then finally we're going to have the classical drakes we would have gotten a couple of these drakes uh possibly even in the cataclysm expansion these would have featured uh, uh, quite a lot. So each of these are, are altered and then we'll be able to customize them even further. Now Blizzard's own words on this is that there's millions of possible combinations to choose from. No two drakes are the same, which is a pretty, pretty cool idea. Now when they're saying millions of, uh, of, of possible combinations, that literally is coming down to color and you know, changing probably little things such as the wing color and then the head color and then the tail color, which, you know, out of all the colors there are and then all the different possibilities of where you can place each color, you know, there's going to be millions. On top of that as well, uh, this these are going to be com completely customizable. So that's going to be a, a pretty cool feature to have added in these customizable um these customizable, customizable dragons because what this allows us to do is that it could be a very cool way of adding in new rewards into PvP, into raiding, into Mythic Plus, into just achievements. For example, it, it's definitely you're going to be able to do um, add all these different cosmetics onto the dragon, such as you could put a, a, a different snout on it, different varieties of snouts. You could have possibly different uh, wingspans. You're going to, uh, different tail selections, horns, um, nails even armor. So imagine at the end of completing uh, an, a really, really difficult uh, mythic raid boss, maybe even the last one or some achievement associated with, with this, such as one of those, uh, you know, overall raiding achievements, you could be, a, instead of just being awarded with loot and a mount, you could also get maybe a specific piece of armor for your dragon which it's it's just that little extra it's like um it's like player housing but just for your dragon so maybe the experimentation that blizzard are implementing with these dragons in this dragon riding feature maybe that's going to be a step in the right direction for them to possibly in the next expansion the 10th expansion player housing so it's definitely something different and it's definitely something to keep uh, an eye on. So imagine just having all these additional rewards available just to customize your mount to make it even more unique and then being able to color probably these armor and just changing it um, 
it just it just sounds fantastic now this once again is a completely different new gameplay feature so it's going to be all about more more or less gliding through the air than flying so we're going to have to keep our dragon in the air now that what i've also been able to see from the developers is that they're going to be able to have different challenges around the new continent and possibly these challenges could be some really cool aerial gameplay where we must maybe get from one mountain peak to another, maybe in a set time limit. And if we get that, maybe we get a new cosmetic, for example, or we unlock a new skill. There's so much they can add into this if they are just innovative enough. And hopefully they'll be able to expand even further on the Guild Wars 2 inspiration and they'll be able to add in even more cool animations and, you know, instead of making it making it like some cheap knockoff, you know? Um, so that's, that's going to be a really, really cool new feature. And of course, on top of this, people, there's going to be a brand new feature added in. And I've already kind of touched on it already. And that's going to be the lovely world of... Um, Oh, the lovely war. Oh, actually, before I move on to that, just to kind of give you a little bit of a preview of what's going to be like riding around and diving in on, on these. So it's all about gaining momentum and just you know, keeping your dragging afloat. So this is, I should have actually probably kept this on in the background just to kind of give you a bit of a, a feel. Now, I think it's going to be very important that the feel of this is going to be correct. So when I'm when I'm riding on the dragon, it's going to really engage me and the animations are going to make it feel impactful, you know? So let's see, let's see how well they may do that on that or not. So we are going to be able to switch between uh, how our characters are presented in the world. Now this is going to be this is going to be taking a lot of inspiration from the Worgen customization that they have in the game. So if you if you've ever played a Worgen or or seen the Worgen starting area, you'll be able to see that you can transform freely between a wolf or a worgen uh into your humanoid form and the exact same is going to be is going to take place here with the draca with your draconic form and also your humanoid form as well and these are going to be completely uh customizable i'll, I'll look a little bit more at the customization uh, um, options in just a little bit now on top of this they are going to be completely restricted to just one race and that makes sense lore wise and also i guess these evokers these drac theory evokers evoke evoker being the class drac theory being the race these evokers they channel the dragon's essences so it's going so the five different essences of the dragon flights are going to be present in how they play in one way or another so uh, from what i can see here um i'm just going to do, do, do i'm going to just come into these specializations and just to kind of show you in the background here of, of how one plays now as mentioned it's going to be quite restrictive with how this is going to play out now it's going to be very similar to i guess demon hunters from legion where they could only be night elves on the alliance or blood elves on the horde even thinking back to the days of classic of, of vanilla when shaman could only be horde and paladin could only be alliance it, it's 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 restrictive just like that and that can be very good. It's going to be very interesting um, because it just fits. It fits. It, 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 it gives us that fantasy what, what we've wanted. Um, and the, another cool thing about this as well is that you get to choose your allegiance. So coming on to the second point on, on the screen, you can either choose to be, to be Horde or Alliance. You're going to start as a neutral character, just like the Pandarian back in the mists of Pandaria. When you started on that starting island and you made your way up to like level 10 or, or I think it was like level 10 back in the day, um, at the end of that, you had to make an impact, a very impactful choice of being either on the Alliance or the Horde. Now, from a developer article I have seen, is they're going to make this a bit more meaningful 
um, of how they're going to uh, progress you through here. A more practical, meaningful choice. We're, we're going to have to see how that, how that zone plays out whenever it's available on alpha or even beta and whatever choices they decide to change uh, going forward. But you can, you will definitely start as a neutral class, just like the Pandarian. Now, I kind of wonder, is it possible that you could somehow break the game a little bit and stay as a neutral ca class. Um, that is very possible to do, although not by any means um, desirable to do with the Pandarian. You could definitely stay as a neutral Pandarian by just staying on the island and just leveling up through like mining and and herbing and all that kind of stuff. It would be very slow to do it, but it, it can be done. So you could have a max level Pandar Pandarian um, by, you know, just never choosing to be Horde or Alliance. Uh, I wonder, is there a way to do that here? Maybe. It's not going to be optimal by any means, but I guess it is definitely a, uh, something you could do. I don't see why people would do it, but look, everyone, you know, there's definitely going to be someone out there who's going to be just mad enough in the head to do that, you know? It's going to be insane in the membrane type of situation. So there, there might even be a hidden achievement attached uh, to this. They should make a hidden achievement. So on top of this, as mentioned, there's going to be a brand new starting area associated with, with these Drakthir. And it's go they're going to start at level 58, similar to how uh, Death Knight started and Demon Hunter started at a higher level back in the day. Um, so you're going to start at a higher level because they are the new hero class of the, of the World of Warcraft. And they, you know what? Now that I think of it, Death Knights, Monks, and Demon Hunters are the last three classes added into the game. And they were all melee, and subsequently, since they were melee, they also had to be tanks as well to kind of fulfill that. But this is the first ranged character ever introduced into the game. You know outside of the baseline classes. Now I guess why why this is just clicking with me right now is because Blizzard have spent so much time over the last couple of expansions really kind of fleshing out class identity and the roles and they really you know made changes between uh, hunters were a big one with with their with their specs of marksman and survival and and beast mastery and they've really kind of made them a bit different from each other same with with mages you know getting them to feel all a bit different so i guess that's why it just clicked with me now this is actually the first ever ranged character added in um, because the other ones were Millie. And and funnily enough, at, um, an article with... And I, even um, Ian Hostikosis, uh, the game director, even mentioned it on, on the Deep Dive uh, video that this that they didn't want more Millie. There's too many Millie as, as there is. So having, um, having a ranged-only class is going to be interesting. Now, since they are ranged, that means they're also going to be uh, available to be a healer as well so from what i can see here is that the evokers can use a devastation which is going to uh, bring out the abilities of the red and blue dragon flights and with these abilities they're going to be able to stay at ranged they're you know and they're going to be able to fulfill a certain niche with with however this works out now the cool things are is that i have read uh, that there's going to be some interesting uh, developments with the... I'm just trying to see if I can find the exact... Uh, I don't think I can see it right here. Ah, yes. So, um, so on this Polygon... Art, um, on this Polygon article with Steve Denuser, one of the developers of WoW, is that they, you know, evokers as a range class, they're going to be able to use wing buffet to be able to blow people away, you know, uh, they're going to be able to breathe fire from their mouths, they're going to be able to do an, an Anixia style move um, where they can kind of do like a bombing run, kind of like a Breath of Cindergosa uh, that the Death Knights can do, something similar to that. And they were kind of pretty much saying that, you know, 
these are things that that a gnome could not necessarily do, which makes sense. So it, this is why they're tying the evoker to just this brand new race, the Drakthir. So they'll be able to use the red and blue um, aspect powers to be able to power them up. Now, on the flip side of that, there's a brand. There's another. Um, there's a. There's another. Uh, healing specialization being added into the mix of what we're going to see on the video right here and this is going to be all about uh, renewal this is going to be about burst healing so to be able to add a healer they're going to have to fulfill a certain niche in the in the healing game and what they feel is best for this um, preservation role this healing role for the Drakthir is going to be a uh, burst healing so that's so, so they're going to so anytime you're going to need burst healing whether it's in your pvp your mythic pluses your runs your just your regular runs um or it's even raiding so if there's an encounter that requires a lot of burst healing these are going to be perfect and without a doubt they're going to make sure there's going to be some encounters like that just as an excuse to fit in these bad boys now the green uh the green and bronze uh, magic aspects are going to be used here now the bronze is associated with time so they're going to be able to uh, maybe heal over time or they're going to be able to slow or manipulate time or fast heals things like that uh, with their abilities and skills so we'll have to see how that exactly pans out the only missing aspect from from these selections from what i saw so far is the black uh powers the black aspect powers so we're going to have to see are they going to be just separated through both the deservation, the deservation, uh, I can't even speak, <laughs> through both the devastation and the preservation roles? Are they going to be like some kind of passive things? Are they going to be just uh, skills that can be used for both no matter what? It's going to be hard to say right now because we don't know all of their skills. We only know a couple of minor skills. We don't even know what the preservation skills are. All what we have seen is that there seems to be some sort of, if we look at this animation once again, of when it comes into the healer, it seems to be this like, this circle forms and then it, this kind of uh, flower bursts and heals everyone in an AoE. And then there's another one that it seems to be a frontal cone, kind of like a, the Paladin uh, skill uh, back in the day um, that would just heal everything in a cone. So it kinds to, it kinds to be taking uh, its cues from that. Now, how this class plays out and its representation in PvP, Mythic Plus, raiding, etc. Is, is something we're going to need to wait and see. Uh, but I'm sure... You know, there will be plenty of balancing throughout the alpha, beta, and even once the game releases to make sure that these are represented. Because if you cannot play the evoker, if they're very low on DPS on the meters, or their healing is very subpar, no one's going to play them. And, you know, people could have wasted wasted a lot of their time building up one of these um one of these classes now if if history is anything to go by especially with debt knights and stuff released into the game then these could potentially be very overpowered now bringing us into the overpowered part there's a brand new gameplay mechanic that's going to feature uh in in the gameplay now it might be just the the dps spec that has this but it's going to be empowered abilities now this is a brand new uh, gameplay mechanic that's only only available to the evokers so far now seeing how this plays out may also uh, go into lots of other uh, skills throughout the game now this definitely features now someone from the dev team may have played a little bit of bit of lost arc and got inspired by this but what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to charge up abilities by holding down the space bar. And the longer you hold that space bar, the more charged up the ability could be. So f from hitting one target to hitting the two targets to hitting the three targets was an example that um, this is an ability that can be used. Now I can find so many other abilities such as if you were to do, let's say, some if you were playing, let's say, an arms warrior or something, and if you were lifting this mighty mace above your head, you could possibly hold it that the longer he keeps it to charge up and then he smashes it down. Maybe it... it captures more people in some sort of seismic event you know you can your mind can really wander with this stuff maybe it's rogues and maybe the the longer you hold back you you can throw more knives or something like that you know just 
there's things you can just make it very impactful where it makes sense. So this is definitely going to be um, a, a new mechanic that, and they'll see how it works here and then possibly over the expansion they might divide into different skills or it will be in a new expansion. Now, before I finish up here with the Evoker class, we're going to have a quick look at the customization. So this is going to be an example of some of their full bodies, what they're going to look like. Um, this is some of their different heads that, that you'll see. Uh, these are some uh, female form variations. So once again, if you want to be a humanoid, instead of showing your dragon form, your draconic form, uh, more female headshots right here. L like it just looks, it looks really beautiful. Some of these, some of this customization. Now, how much of this is, you know, you can change. I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll have to see. Uh, along uh, some of the males here, uh, definitely some inspiration here. This looks definitely look like, like a Rathian. So some different males here. Um, so they're all humanoids, so very human-esque uh, creatures. So they have the horns, they have, you know, their beards, the different shaped beards, uh, or else maybe no beards at all, some different um, accessories in their ears, or maybe other piercings and stuff like that. Um, so we'll, it's just something we're going to have to see. Um, I think it might be nicer if they kind of take a little bit of a direction from the Kieran Tor. And not the Kirin Tor, the Kulturas, the Kulturas humans, where they're kind of big and bulky. It might be nice to be able to have maybe a bit of a bulky, bulky dragon instead of just uh, lean. Uh, it would be nice if you could customize maybe their belly and maybe some of their, their width a little bit. But look, it's early days. Maybe they have a specific, um, maybe they just want to be very specific and just have them lean. I get, That's fine. Um, but it would be nice to have that bit of a burly uh, humanoid uh, form as well. So we'll have to go back and see on that. 